Welcome to Midwest Sports Net, and thanks for stopping by the summit. It is a privilege today to get to visit with the head women's basketball coach of the Harding Lady Bisons, Coach Tim Kirby. And Coach, congratulations. You know, we had an opportunity in the last summit to get to visit with someone who had won his 300th game. Uh, oddly enough, a rival as uh, we got to visit with Dave Wilbers over at Arkansas Tech. And lo and behold, here you've got 302. My goodness, there's a lot going on in Division II women's basketball in Arkansas but congratulations to you, sir. Hi, right, thanks, Joey. I appreciate it. Listen, I know you've been doing this for quite a while. Obviously, 300 wins uh, denotes a, a significant amount of longevity. Talk about what it takes to get to 300. You know, when you start off at, at zero, that's really never even a thought. In fact, it wasn't a thought after we played that game because I really didn't even know. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's just one of those things that if you do it long enough, you probably – have a chance to win some games. You just don't know how many, but um, the the thing that after I was told that, the thing that popped in my head first was just all the girls that have been a part of this and and really have have done those things without a whole lot of help from me, probably. But um, and then also the coaches that have been with us along the way too. So you know, you don't think. Uh, 15 years ago that 15 years later anything about where you're going to be or most coaches are somewhere else I mean you just don't you don't see coaches staying around at a place that long very often and uh, you know coach Wilbers and coach Grover at Southeastern I think we're all three the kind of the ones that have been doing this at the same place for a while and and um, I mean that's that's probably the the kind of schools we're at. Probably attributes to that a little bit, just with with them sticking with us and and um, supporting us and giving us a a good working environment and a place that we feel like we can be successful. I mean, a lot of that with the longevity of it is is very important. You, know, you see a lot of schools just bouncing around. Sometimes it's the coaches that are doing it. Sometimes it's the the school that's making those decisions and it's hard to get any kind of consistency and probably the the thing that sticks out the most besides the the girls that were involved in this is just how consistent um, they've been and how we've been able to to kind of do the same thing over and over uh, you see a lot of a lot of schools that that change how they play and uh, for whatever reason I mean there's a lot of reasons for that stuff um, but we've kind of done – you get our scouting report from 15 years ago. Other than the personnel, it's pretty similar to what we're doing right now, and we just haven't changed much. And um, I, I don't know if that's a, a positive or a negative or what that means, but we just haven't – we haven't had a whole lot of, of uh, philosophy change over the years, and I think that's helped us a whole lot with just staying consistent. That's probably a positive coach. And, and listen, 15 years ago or back in 2005, when you took over at, at Harding, I was still coaching basketball and that seems like a lifetime ago. So <laughs> you're exactly right. And by the way, did you get to visit with Aaron Grover? You mentioned him, the women's basketball coach at Southeastern Oklahoma state. And he, uh, he was more than happy. He's been there for 15 years. He was more than happy to give you the title of the Dean of the coaches in the great. <laughs> he's still got all his hair. So, <laughs> hey, well, we won't talk about that. That, that yeah. that's neither here nor there. But uh, anyway, three hundred wins now, Coach. One and two here in twenty twenty one is uh, this new season has finally gotten underway, and I know we're all excited about that. But you know, two ninety nine to complete last season. Obviously, uh, you know, highlighted. Uh, I would think at least by twenty seventeen and making it to the final four of Division two in, in in women's basketball, some national tournament berths along the way. Anything stand out to you? Well, again, just the the girls that were involved in all that. You know, you you think about who played with who, and after fifteen years, it kind of is confusing <laughs> on who were teammates. And you know, we've we've kind of just brought in freshmen and they've been here four or five years, depending on the situation. And if that's the case, then those freshmen came in and played with seniors. And then when they became seniors, they were playing with freshmen. So, I mean, you're, you're not just talking about four years of girls, you're talking about seven or eight uh, sometimes on who played with who. And, 
and uh, you forget you forget all of the all of the uh, connections that are involved in all of that. Um, that 17 team, and we had a couple of transfers that year that that uh, played for us, but we had a, a whole lot of girls that were that were part of some really good teams in there. You know, Andy Haney played um, four years here and had a pretty good record when she was done. So uh, just those kind of things contribute to to getting wins. You know, coaches, I don't know how much this is thought about uh, today, but um, averaging 20 wins a year for 15 years, I mean, you feel pretty for, you feel pretty good about about the how that is and and just the consistency of it you know our league has changed a few times you know i've been here 28 years so i was with coach morgan for the first 12 with the men uh, as his assistant and um and we've done four or five different things uh, throughout those 28 years with the different conferences that we we're involved in and moving from nai to division two and you know, there's just a lot of stuff that goes into that. You know, you don't – you're kind of playing the same people a little bit, but at the same time, just the the move is a pretty big step as far as scheduling and, and the way things are set up, the way the tournaments are set up. Uh, it makes it – it makes it pretty tough when you're, when you're changing that often. So, uh, again, to average 20 wins a year has been – a blessing to us and and again the school administration has a lot to do with that i mean we've we've had a couple of great ad's here and and uh, i'm pr i'm sure i drive them crazy but <laughs> they they were also pretty good to work for so uh that's it's been a, a pleasant 15 years with the girls and and have really enjoyed it um you know you talk about the different players that have come through we there's kind of a, a joke about how soft I've gotten over the years, uh, especially from those first couple of years. But and we came in and and uh, made some pretty big uh, changes as far as just the expectations of, of the physical part of it and the conditioning part of it. And uh, all those girls that played 15 years ago look at me like, <laughs> who are you? So <laughs> things have changed a little bit, but. And we still try to be pretty tough on them, and and uh, but we've recruited some some good girls that that handle that stuff pretty well. Is that, is that similar to how the kids come in and and uh, look at parents when they become grandparents and say, "Wait, who? This is not the same person I grew up with." Is that? Oh, oh yeah, no doubt, no <laughs> doubt. You know, Coach Morgan's got pretty good distance between his oldest and his youngest, mm -hmm. and uh, we give him a hard time a lot of times just about that, but. Uh, you know, that youngest one, I've got a brother that, that uh, we give a hard time about that, that we had five boys in our family and the youngest one got treated a whole lot different than we did. <laughs> I understand. We're speaking with Tim Kirby now, the women's basketball coach at Harding University. 300 victories, you just crossed that plateau. I mentioned one and two in 2021. It's a different season already, uh, the, the way that uh, the schedule's working out. Of course, uh, the Harding Lady Bison's competing in the Great American Conference. It's uh, a quadruple round robin, as I heard it mentioned back in in uh, preseason time. And, and you've had to miss a couple of games already but one and two now uh, talk about your season as it is now and, and the differences this year. Um, I think just the, the not knowing what's going to come up, you schedule these games and, and you get ready for the next one and then one's canceled and then you just go to the next one. I mean, it's like the scouting report that you had for last Saturday when we, we had to miss that game. Um, we just kind of put it off to the side and started on the next one. And, uh, I think that's how you have to do it. You can't you can't dwell on that stuff and and um, you just uh, you know you we're we're talking about the longevity of this, but I think that one thing that we've tried to do here, and it's hard sometimes just with the the things that are going on with injuries and those kind of things, you got to go to the next game. And, you know, coaches talk about that stuff all the time, but it's it's truly that way this year. You got to go get ready for the next people you're playing, and if Thursdays is canceled you do that again and hopefully you don't get uh, too frustrated along the way and it keeps you from being able to compete but uh, that's kind of the way we we treated it I was in the office before um, 
this call and that's kind of what I was doing. I mean, the next, the next game is sitting here in front of me and Saturday's game is, has been put on a file and <laughs> we'll see them three more times and <laughs> we'll, we'll catch them along the way somewhere. Well, coach, uh, you know, is there anything that, that you would uh, say about this tenure? You know, I, I think about Harding and, and getting to cover you all in, in recent years for about, about 10 of those years. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm glad you mentioned that your time with the men's basketball team as well. There are folks who may not, uh, you know, realize that, that you spent a significant amount of time working with men's basketball, but that's something that stands out to me about Harding in particular. And you talked about the, the, the girls that come in as freshmen, they play for four years or five years. And, and, uh, you know, there, there is a consistency with your program. And I think with the entire athletic department, at, at Harding, and I'll I'll let you address that. I think that's something that stands out to to the um, as a, as a hallmark towards success. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go on on our campus that that you know they can, they can be distractions just because our campus life is is um, just so there's just so many things going on. And but we tell our girls we want them to get involved in that stuff. Now they have to balance their time, and it can't get in the way of what we're doing, but. Um, we want our girls to experience all of that and and see the things that really are different from us and and a lot of other schools that are out there. Uh, all of our students live on campus. There's there's uh, different kinds of clubs and and things going on. There's community service stuff. There's mission trips. There's there's a lot of things that over the four years that they're here, we want them to be able to to be involved in those things because that's part of parting and part of what we do and it's not mandatory that they have to do that stuff but we encourage it and, and want them to be involved in it and if they're here for four years uh, it's really on them on whether uh, they experience it or not um, but if they go through here for for four years there's a good chance they've uh, been involved in something that's really good bigger than themselves and <clears throat> they're um i think they're they're blessed for it, and the school is too. I mean, we just our alumni base is is incredible. Just over the, not just the United States, but the world, and we have students from everywhere. And uh, it's very noticeable when we're out, even recruiting. You know, you're in the Dallas area, which we have a huge uh, number of alumni from there, and all I own is Harding stuff. So I think I've said this before. If I ever get fired, I'm I'm going to have to get a whole new wardrobe because <laughs> it's all black and gold. And Harding stuff. So, uh, but when you're out and somebody stops you going, do you go to Harding and, and uh, you tell them what you're doing and they'll have 15 stories about their experience at Harding or somebody they know that went to Harding. So uh, it's just a, it's a neat experience and, and uh, recruiting freshmen uh, that gives them an opportunity to, to uh, have four or five years here that, that they get to to be a part of it and, and experience those things. So, and I think it, it, it helps with just the overall attitude and and um, I don't know if you call it something that's that's they think more of it than than anything else. But they're just their their thoughts about the program and the school. Uh, sometimes you get a pretty good effort uh, that goes along with that. So. Um, uh, again, this all of this is is about the kids, and and we hope that it's a, a good experience for them, and and uh, they leave here with a good taste in their mouth. And then, you know, ten years down the road, they're still supporting us, so that's a that's a good thing too. Well, I will tell you that it's been a privilege to get to work with you, and always fun to get to visit with you. And I appreciate what you're doing there at uh, at Harding at Searcy, Arkansas. Division two Lady Bisons and Coach Tim Kirby, 300 victories now in the books. So I know the next one is the next one. So whatever that is uh, and, and, and whatever scouting report that you're uh, scheduled to see next, I think it's Henderson State this week. Is that correct? Well, we got Monticello first. So Monticello, okay. So All right. That was that was actually our first one uh, a couple of weeks ago because the, the Washita game was was canceled. So we get to see them again and <laughs> Well, hey, listen, there was just a one in five chance of me getting it right anyway <laughs> with the way your schedule works out. So uh, anyway, okay, Monticello coming up this week. Uh, Coach Tim Kirby, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking time with us on the summit today. And again, congratulations. Hey, thanks, Joey.